you're finally tackling your spring home improvement projects. Hello, 2024 Dream Garden. Until you realize you're short three bags of mulch. And why didn't you grab that pair of gloves you were looking at? Luckily, through Instacart, you don't have to stop mid-project to run to the Home Depot. You can get your missing gardening supplies, tools, and more delivered in as fast as 30 minutes. Have more time for your project and get the Home Depot delivered via Instacart. Visit instacart.com to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. There was a time when sunlight turned the earth into a gallery. When elegant estates welcomed works of art that drew us closer and closer together. It was a captivating time. It was spring. This spring at Biltmore. Plan your visit or overnight stay so you can enjoy the marvelous works of Chihuly while every corner of Biltmore blooms. Reserve now to get spring savings at Biltmore.com. Hashtag no music, no intro. Another episode of Hashtag Saints for a Podcast coming at you. It is Sunday night. We just finished watching the conference uh, championship games this Sunday in the NFC, in the AFC. And I want to all, I want to tie this all related to the Saints, right? But this is the Saints, tw- Saints podcast. We have a lot of Saints things to talk about. We're going to talk about where in the world is Sean Payton um, and all that on this podcast and give updates and all this. But I said this on the Patreon only episode we did um, last week. If you haven't listened to that, we're not going to repeat anything that we said on that podcast. So if you didn't listen to that, that's on you. If you're a Patreon, you haven't listened, you need to go listen. If you're not a Patreon and you haven't listened, you need to become a Patreon, go listen. But uh, I, I didn't watch a lot of the, the Eagles 49ers game. Watch very, very little of that one. But just watching this AFC championship game, it really just focused how far the Saints are away from being like a team that can contend, man. Like it's not even remotely fucking close, Ryan. Like, God damn. It ain't close <laughs> at all, bro. At all. At all. And like that that's the one thing that like just struck me today. Like, man, these teams so far in the Saints, bro. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Which which is funny because right they played the they played the Bengals earlier this season, Pro, you know, had things that going differently in the red zone they probably beat the Bengals right but they mm-hmm. didn't. Um, I, I I don't I think I think that game against Philly and although the Saints probably didn't think so and I can almost guarantee you they didn't think so, like that really gave them mojo like oh mm-hmm. man, the Eagles they the number one seed in the NFC. They were missing their fucking star quarterback. Like mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts not playing matters. You I remember the tweet when you watched him at Alabama or Oklahoma. I forgot I forgot where he in, I forgot which school he ended up it, it, in. Yeah, he was in Oklahoma, yeah. Oklahoma, right? And you you watched them and you you tweeted something and I just I whatever you saw with Jalen Hurts, man, I, I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. But that just goes to the credit of you have a coach who has completely made an offense tailored to his quarterback. Yep. And so let's okay, so we got three teams, right? We got the Eagles, we got the Chiefs, and we got the Bengals. Two two of those teams have absolute star franchise quarterbacks. Like you can't debate it. Can't debate it. Under, can't debate. Can't debate it. Jalen Hurts had a great season. I think he's a, an ascending player. But I could, I think you could still probably say the jury is still a little out. Like, you want to mm-hmm. see more more seasons of, of his play, of how he's played this year. And then you have a team like the 49ers where it's like, yes, they hit, they hit on Brock Purdy. And he was a good point guard, a great point guard for Kyle Shanahan's offense. But they're like the team where if you don't have like the guy, like the dude, like the top five dude quarterback in the league, then the recipe is you got to have a 
top three, top two elite defense. Like, you got to have one. Which they did. <laughs> Which they did. They did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But, like, right now, the Saints, and I, I get it, man. I know, and I, I, I try not to be so pessimistic on this podcast because I feel like we're we're so, I feel like I, we're often pessimistic. But, like, I would be remiss if I just said, like, I just, I just don't, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel right now, Ryan. Like, I, I don't see it. It's it's hard for me to see. And it's like, okay, well, they don't, got, the Saints don't have the dude. We don't even know who they, they don't even have, they don't even have Andy Dalton on, on the team right now. He's a free agent. James is probably going to be cut. So they're no idea who the quarterback solution is. And then, the, so you can't even look at that as an option. Uh, and I get it. It's early in the off season. There's a whole bunch of things that can fucking change. What have you, whatever. But they don't have the, they don't have the guy at quarterback and they don't have an elite defense. I'm, I don't care what people like. Yes. The defense approved as the season went along. I get all that. But like elite, elite, it was not. Like, mm-hmm. It played great in spurts, but it was not elite, elite. If it was elite, elite, those two drives against Tampa Bay don't happen. They don't happen. And I, I just keep going of like how, how does this, how do you, how do you fix this, man? Like Ooh. it's such a that's a loaded question. I know it, man. <laughs> loaded as hell. Um, but what I guess. Simply, simply put, where would you start? Just I, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want the complete <laughs> answer of how you fix it. And I, but I'm just gonna ask you where, where would you start? I mean, and I guess talking coaching is out the out the question because we can't control that, right? <laughs> can't control it, but <laughs> well, we can't I, control anything. But I mean, at least like we know, DA at least for this year is not going anywhere. Pete Carmichael was going to be the OC. One, just real quick, can I? Can we give Zach Taylor some some flowers on this podcast, man? Please, because man, I shit on him for years, bro. Me, me and you both, Ryan. Like we have shit on that man, and it is four and six, fourth and six mm, in the mm-mm. AFC Championship game. He said, "I got the dude. I got an elite wide receiver. I'm dropping my nuts because I trust in my guys. Four to trust in my guys." He said, "Look, we going against Patrick Mahomes." You got to go win the game. You got to go, gotta win, go win it. it. Can't, can't be putting and all that shit. Go win the game. They took that play away. Bro, I was up in here screaming. They, that fourth to six, bro. And Burrow put that a, thing in the air like that, boy. What a, what a, what, can we, what a play by Jamar. I know the Bengals didn't win, but every time I see T. Higgins make plays, bro, I just get, get, get so mad. Just take my head, bro. <laughs> get fed up, bro. But. I just wanted to give some some flowers to to Zach Taylor because he has shown that he is a good NFL head coach. Like we were we were saying he was in the top in like in the bottom five with like Dennis Allen at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Bro. Like ain't the case no more. Like even little things during the game today, you court, quarterback getting beat up. So yeah. Zach Taylor, offensive line coach, come up with a plan. They keeping a tight end and a running back in the backfield to help chip on blocks. Like, just little yeah. things, bro. It's like, damn. Like, Getting the ball out quick, you know, that's coaching, bro. Coaching. But, yes, sorry. <laughs> but to answer your question, no, coach, coaching is not part of where you can start. I think well, I tweeted earlier um, this week, like, they, the Saints need – it's not like I'm breaking news here. Like, I'm sure they – I'm sure they do this. But they need to compile a list of every single possible quarterback available. Free agency – you know, hypothetically available via trade, um, rookies, I mean, uh, you know, prospects, uh, everything, bro. Like, just a long re- list. Re- reclamation projects, bro. Reclamation like- project, anything, every single, and they need to get all the pro, pro scouts on it and get a good grade on where each quarterback is right now. And <clears throat> stick Andy Dalton. Somebody suggested this to me, and I was like, that made – it makes a lot of sense. Take Andy Dalton and place him wherever on the list. Like wherever he ranks on that list, maybe like in the bottom third. Look at everybody above that. <laughs> like where <is> that Dalton <laughs> line. So everybody above that Dalton line. Look at them. And don't just don't make Dalton put a star next to Dalton. Like don't pick Dalton. Don't pick him. <laughs> pick anybody. Yeah. 
can't, can't have it again, bro. Can't, can't I can't go through it again. It again. Can't go through it again. So that's what they need to do. And I don't know who that quarterback is. I don't know if it's fucking Jimmy G. I don't know if it's Derek Carr. You know, Trey Lance and all this stuff doesn't sound realistic to me. You know, yes, I would call and ask about uh, Justin Fields, even though I don't think that's happening either. Justin Fields, Jordan Love, like I, I don't call him. Jordan Love, everybody. I'm just, I'm, I'm working the phone, bro. I'm just calling, just seeing what you think. What, 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 what you want for Jordan Love? But, I, okay, this is this is how desperate I'm. I am Ryan. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this. This is this when you know we we reach Def Defcon. What uh, is that? Four one. I always forget if high or low. I, I, I would call the Jets, bro. I, I'm not saying call them to make him a starter, but at this point, like I like I would call the Jets about Zach Wilson. I would. I know that sounds like a hot take. It's not. It's not a hot take at all, bro. Like you was drafted I, I, number two <laughs> overall. I, I got to turn some rocks over, bro. Like, and I, do I trust him to do well in a Pete Car? No, Carmichael. No, no, I, I don't. But you have to have a dart throw. Like the reason why the Niners had like took a dart throw in the draft on Brock Purdy was like. Kyle Shanahan like had the fortitude to just say like I can't like no I don't want to trust him potentially us trying to get him as an undrafted free agent like yeah. I saw enough I saw enough he make enough throws on tape in, in Iowa State like he fits into my system I just I just and, and I look, didn't and I know and I'm sure Kyle wasn't like yeah I wanted to start this year but it was like you got him in there you know what I'm saying you get him in the building you see what he looks like you made him the third string quarterback oh and he got the opportunity and he looked good you know what I'm saying. So it's just keep about getting the guys in there. Like, think about Geno Smith. You know, they had him, you know, as a backup to Russell Wilson for years. You know what I'm saying? In the building, just working at it. So that's why I wouldn't be opposed to somebody like Jack, Zach Wilson. Like, even if he's not the guy this year, or maybe not next year, or maybe he's never the guy. But you need talent, you know, talent. Like the, you, gotta start, you gotta start looking, man. You gotta start talent. Looking. Like, but talent is the key word. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. talent in the building. You know, Andy Dalton is a talent. We tried that, tried it with Jameis Winston. Look, I, I still part of me would like to see a healthy Jameis Winston, you know, with a full Saints offense to see how that would work. But I just feel like that ship kind of shelled, and I'm just ready to move on to something else. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't work out. Like, just let's just move right. on, man. We tried. We tried. You know what I'm saying? We tried. I think the Saints failed at it. Jameis Winston failed at it in some respect. So let's just move on. But they I mean, got right. to get they got to get quarterback right, bro. And it might not happen this year. Um, but it's like it has to be a process where they keep trying to get it right until they get it right. Um, and how you fix it though, bro? Like here's the thing: that defense, that vaunted defense we keep talking about, bro. Ooh. It's it's about to get about worse that? and worse. Bro. About that. Come on, man. I, I got. I keep seeing all all these takes, you know, on on Twitter, just like. Like this defense is old, old bro. Old. Your best pass rusher last year was an aging Cam Jordan and probably Big Creep. That, that those were your best pass rushers last year. You don't know if you're going to bring Marcus Davenport back or not. Uh, I adamantly do not want him back on this team. Don't don't care. I don't care what PFF says. I don't care what John <laughs> says. I don't care. I didn't put a blurb in the Discord, and we almost dumped this man just for putting it in the Discord. I just, I just, I just turned, I just logged out, man. I said, "Shit, but he don't mean he was taking me, John Singer. John Singer, all he did was just, just post the quote. That's all he did." <laughs> when this man is like liking tweets on Twitter about like, oh, a bro, bro, I was dead though. That I'm just gonna say, if y'all listen to this, go to uh, Marcus Davenport Twitter and go look at his like his last like tweet. Just go look at it, bro. Because <laughs> it's so on brand. On brand, bro. <laughs> it's just, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear about you know. Yes, there's a hole at at pass rusher. Yes, the Saints probably you could kind of like make an argument of like it just it's kind of better with the devil you know i don't give me a new devil like whatever money you're gonna pay him 
find some other devils in free agency. I I I don't care, bro. I just can't I can't do it. But to your point, you got an agent to Mario Davis. You you got Caden Ellis. Don't know if he's gonna stay on the team or not. You got Pete Warner, who's played outstanding, but you know, he's had injury issues. Secondary, who yeah, you mean it's just it's just like a just a weird mix and mash. Weird mix, and it's probably the strength of the team. You know what I'm saying? A secondary. And even that's, you know, has holes. So it's like, what do you got? You know what I'm saying? You got something we probably wished for years ago was probably, a, you know, a, a solid defense. Not a great defense, but a solid defense. But I just keep seeing people be like, well, you know the defense is going to be good. So I'm like, what? Well, hold up. Why do you think that? Like, why do you think just assume that defense is going to be good? Like, I don't I don't assume that because that influx of talent is gone, man. Like, that talent. Oh, man. Has left those years has passed, you know. Shout out to yeah. shout out to CD Deuce for making the Super Bowl though. <laughs> that was <laughs> oh the TL was hot boy when they, they had a nice they, they had a nice clip of um Nick Sirianni hugging um CJ for a nice long time. I'm like man, TL was just TL was going through it, bro. The TL was going through it. <laughs> um. A fifth round defense, pick, bro. Fifth round pick, uh, and we sent them a seventh round pick. <laughs> like, why? Why'd you send them a pick? <laughs> like, how? How would Roseman, bro? Give up props to Howard Roseman to build two Super Bowl teams, two different head coaches now, two completely different ways, too, man, and two completely different teams. Like this team is yep. completely different from the one that won with Nick Foles a couple years ago. The only, um, the only, the only two things that are the same: strong in the trenches on both sides, bro. That's it. Well, that's how that's how Roseman. Like that's yep. They don't and care theory, who comes in. Like that's going to be a thing. But you know what's funny? Speaking of these playoff teams, you know what team tries to emulate that same same way is it's the Saints, <laughs> right? You would think, right? Try, you, I mean. The, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. They drafted like, Clayton Turner, right? They drafted That's how they approach it. Davenport. They drafted uh, Trevor uh, Trevor Penning. They drafted Caesar Ruiz. Like, like it's in the it, some some people hit do better at draft picks than other people. That's that's it. They man. gotta they gotta recalculate their little Reds algorithm or whatever. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of defense, before I forget this this huge point that I wanted to talk about. Um, I know a lot of Saints fans aren't seeing Ryan Nielsen uh, being named a uh, defensive coordinator of the Falcons as like a big thing because he was, you know, he was co co DC, whatever. Mm-hmm. I do think there are a lot of probably because he was the defensive line coach and us as fans didn't see um, a lot of production. We probably wanted to see from a lot of uh y- the younger defensive ends that we kind of maybe kind of saw him that that like that was all his role He's pr- he probably had a lot more to do with DA's defense in terms of the things that went well for it I think more than people people know oh man no question it's 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 a it's a it's a bigger loss than it's a bigger loss than people then, then people probably make it out to be. Is that, is that what I'll leave it as? I immediately saw a distinct difference when he started coaching for the Saints in the D line. Yep, immediately. Like I just saw the just the the discipline they played with, the hand usage, everything. Man, like you saw a distinct difference. Yes, the talent. You know, I'm sure the talent made a difference in some respects, but. I mean, it wasn't like the talents was that much different. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, I remember, like, the comments when they brought him in. They were like, we're actually doing pass rush drills. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, y'all wasn't doing that. Y'all wasn't doing that before. Like, <laughs> so, that's a huge loss. Like, will he be a good defensive coordinator? Like, that's a different, you know, that's a different job. I'm sure he'll do fine. But it's a loss, man. Like, it's a loss. I don't know who they're going to replace him with. Um, I don't know if you know if things would just go on fine, bro. But that's talent out the building, and look like that kind of comes with the game, man. With coaches, they you you, you know you develop them and they, and they leave, but and you hope, but like man, do we have the staff 
Do, or, no. Put it, no, let, no. Me change, let me change the question. Okay. Do we have the leader in the building mm. that's mm. going to develop Steph like that? And look, to, from, you know, I mean, from what I understand is DA did help with bringing in guys like Bill Sin and, uh, you know, some of the guys like that. So maybe he does have an eye for coaching talent. I don't know. I mean, we just got to see, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you said, I agree with you 100% in terms of where, where, where things need to start at. They have, there has to be a direction. There has to be a direction going forward of what the plan is at quarterback, right? They gotcha. tried to make a splash last offseason by going out and getting an absolute serial rapist, but luckily, think think the stars that didn't work out, mm. and and now it, it felt it it felt like that was their first plan. Jameis was Plan B, and they really never thought of a uh, like a plan other than that. Of like, what well, what if Jameis just doesn't work out? And right. I think my my issue with the team, especially long like long term, and this is not this is going back a couple of seasons, is they they are a very short sighted team. Yes. They don't think two three seasons down the line. They're very like right now in the moment type of team, which at times is great. But at other times, when you're looking at it like long picture, it doesn't make any like they're sometimes their moves doesn't make any sense like so i 100 percent agree with you that's where they have to start um i do think there's going to be quite a few options out there like you said Derek carr jimmy garoppolo um maybe maybe kirk cousins is going to be out there too man i i I don't know man i and i know as soon as as soon as you say kirk cousins name Everyone like, oh no, not Kurt. Ooh, not Kurt. Let me, like, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Well, we'll go ahead about. Let me, let me go ahead and finish about. Kurt. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. What, what do you look? Geno Smith is a free agent. Like people keep thinking we got to trade for him. He's a free agent. Seems like everybody's saying he's going back with Seattle. But that don't I mean shit. That, yeah. Like I believe that too. But like that don't mean shit until it happens. Like, until it happens. Like it's, this is about money. Would you jump in that sweep state? Like, would you go and show him the money? Like, look, man, whatever they're offering you, we'll give you more. Would you do that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> At least that's the plan, Ryan. Like, right. <laughs> and I'm not, and, and I guess it would, I think the big sticking point to that would be like how, how much, because I feel like to, for him to want to come to the team or him to be pried away from Seattle, they would have to overpay mm-hmm. him what Seattle is offering him. So, but then I'm thinking like, you know what? Fuck this team. Y'all was going to move heaven and earth for a serial rapist. Like, can't do that for fucking Geno Smith now. And Geno Smith isn't going to cost anywhere close to what Watson would have cost. Like, so like, fuck, fucking do it. Do it. I don't right. care. I don't care. And, you know, and then you could, you, if you put Geno Smith and he played, plays, I don't even say he even has to ascend from where he played from this season. If he just plays how he played this season, this team is probably a playoff team, bro. Like, I truly believe that. It's interesting. Interesting. Now, it, and this is why free agency and, and March and all these upcoming dates are going to be so crucial because like, I, I, th- I don't think he gets out of Seattle. I really do think no. that, you know, they'll slap him with the, Tag it probably won't be the, the exclusive franchise tag, but he'll get tagged, and Lamar will get the exclusive franchise tag. Um, but you know there'll be the Tom Brady's, there'll be the Derek Cars, Teddy Bridgewater, oh, Bridgewater. I, I, I don't know, man. But that's where you have to start. Like that's where they need to start. I also think, well, since they, I don't know where he falls on their radar now. I know. At one point in time, they thought about Tyler Huntley, the backup from the Ravens, um, potentially being an option for them. But like, just just show just show that you have a plan and a vision at quarterback because it, it's like we said, man. It's like we're back to like, what's the vision? Because right now, like, there is no clear vision of where None. the fuck 
this team is right now. Just just a whole bunch of dis discombobulation. Discombobulated, bro. No vision whatsoever. Like we can't even be happy about a draft pick. <laughs> it's like you know, I mean, just to get to the Sean Payton thing, it's like, you know, bro, I'm ready to I'm ready to start studying some prospects, seeing where we at, but I'm kind of on hold until I know if we're gonna have a first round pick or not. And I, you know, I don't I don't think we will. You know, it feels like he's gone back to Fox, but I want to know for sure. I like I want to step say, okay, Sean Payton is going back to Fox, so I can just move on. Be happy with my little forty forty one overall mm-hmm. draft pick, and you know, look at whatever right tackle or defensive tackle, or whatever that's going to be going in the second round that they won't pick anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and that's why this whole Sean Payton thing is just it just lingers. It's kind of like a a cloud over over the head. Um. Because it really kind of dictates a lot, not everything, but it dictates a lot potentially of how the team um, can move and will move this off season, right? Um, so let's 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 talk about the Sean Payton thing. So I want to start off off the bat with the whole Tom Pelissero report that came out this morning. I just I just, just want to start there, bro. The whole Tom Pelissero thing where. Sean, like Mickey Loomis and the Saints were asking for two first round picks. Th- that that is a hundred percent absolutely not true. <laughs> mm. Teams Mickey Loomis and the Saints set out what they wanted draft compensation wise before even then granting teams permission to talk to Sean. The, yeah. the, and I'm not I'm not breaking news, right? Even his own co-worker Ian Rappaport reported a couple weeks ago the asking price was a first round pick and probably some some mid round draft picks that's the starting point so if you would like to explain to me in two weeks time how that asking price is now doubled to two first round picks I would like to know exactly Greg Rosenthal has taught us and if you're listening to this podcast, you need to understand when you're consuming NFL media, any any type of news, like you said, any type of news, who does it benefit? Who does this report being out benefit? As soon as I saw that report, I was like, man, Sean getting them, you know, no missed calls, no missed texts. He's trying to, mm-hmm. he's trying to out here preserve his image. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's like, oh, you, you know, uh, I, I want to go coach. Like I, I want to go coach the the Cardinals. I want to go choke the Broncos. But you know, Mickey Mickey's out for two first round picks. So like I'm stuck. Like I'm just I'm stuck. I'm I'm a hostage. I'm a, I'm a prisoner. Stop it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> the whole Saints one and two first round picks thing report is is bogus. It a hundred percent came from Sean's camp. If you can just read the tea leaves of who it would benefit, you can kind of shift through it. But, and that's the thing that I still see a lot on Twitter is like people will just come back at at you and they just take everything that they hear through the NFL media as like right. gospel. Like, did we not learn anything from Bounty Gate? Like, right. oh my God. That taught me everything. Everything. And, but it's like, you know, and it, it's, it's really genius to put that out there because it's not like the Saints are going to come out and say, no, we are not looking for two first round picks. You know what I'm saying? It's not like Loomis gonna come out there, you know, correct the record or whatever. No, it's just gonna be out there and get reported everywhere. It just get you know gets picked up by the news aggregators and all that stuff, and it's it's all in pop. You know what I'm saying? So, Sean absolutely just trying to protect his image, trying to protect his uh, trying to protect himself, man. Trying to make himself look good. Sean got an ego, bro. Huge ego, man. Like. I love him to death, bro. He's a great Saints head coach, greatest head, greatest head coach we ever had. But, like, this dude, bro, he knows how to play the media. He knows who to talk to, who to feed information to, and all that shit. He's a master at it. He's he's, he's a master at it. Um, but let's let's get to, like, I guess the, the update. So, uh, the Panthers... 
uh, are making Frank Wright their head coach, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, don't don't know why Steve Steve Wilkes doesn't have a job, but I mean I know why. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. so report comes out today. Sounds like D'Amico Ryan's and the Texans are are going to be like the next team to come to an agreement in terms of um the the D'Amico Ryan's being the next Texans head coach. So it yeah. only leaves two teams, at least two teams that we know about. It leaves the Broncos and it leaves the Cardinals. Now there was a video that came out a couple of days ago. Sean Payton and Michael Bitwell get into his car after a meeting that was supposed to end hours ago and they were still talking and, and yakking it up like they're good buddies. And but if you just watch the video like God damn like this deal about to happen real soon. Right. But it ain't happened yet. And I think something that I think people should know is that if these teams wanted these deals or a deal with Sean to happen already, it would be done. Period. So that means that there's a, there's a sticking point somewhere, whether it's the, what is the contract that Sean's at? I don't, I don't think that the issue to me it, it is not about the, the team's not willing to give up the draft conversation. Now, maybe if you're a team like the Cardinals and the Saints are winning the first round pick, they'll say, well, we have the three overall picks, so we're not going to give you three this year, but we'll give you the first next year, something like that, yeah. whatever. But either one of the three things to the Broncos or to the Cardinals right now still remains an issue. It's either the money that Sean is asking for. It's either um, – the control that Sean wants in terms in terms of like personnel control um and all that or it's just you know maybe Sean wants to bring in his and I think that's kind of the third point but it kind of goes with that second point maybe Sean wants to bring in his own GM maybe he wants to take Jeff Ireland with him or wherever he goes or maybe he wants to take Ryan Pace with him wherever he goes and you know the Cardinals don't want don't want Sean to have his own GM. They have a GM already in place. And they yeah, and so that's that. where, so that's where things get tricky in terms of finding a fit for for Sean Payton to go to a team. I will say this though: what I found interesting with that video um, is that he was walking with the owner. Like it wasn't the owner and the new GM, or it wasn't just the GM. It was just the owner. So that to me, I just find it interesting. Like it's notable because to me, the owner's going to make this decision. It's not going to be got done through 100%. the GM. It's going to be the owner. And if Sean takes the job, he's going to be the new GM's boss. <laughs> yeah. Like if he gets Sean, that job, he gets offered that job. Yeah. Sean, report, Sean will report to Michael Bidwell, not whoever the, whoever the GM is. Exactly. They'll at least be even in the organization, but it won't be, you know what I'm saying? The GM is over him. So I think we just got to let this play out. It's frustrating because I just want to know, bro. Like, I just want it done. Whatever it is, even if it goes back to Fox, I just want to know it's done. We'll see what happens next year and move on, man. But this shit here is just, like, exhausting, man. But like you said, there's four, what, four, what five open as well. Okay. Arizona Texans. Arizona Texans, uh, Panthers, Broncos. The Panthers is gone. Yeah, Panthers Panthers is gone. gone. The Colts. The Colts, yeah. Colts, yeah. Oh, forgot about the Colts, yeah. I keep forgetting about the Colts. Well, that's... Everybody just assumed we're going with Jeff Sanity. (laughs) And I think we know Sean ain't going there. No, no. Him him and Jim Ersay, bro? No. (laughs) Ain't going to happen. Absolutely not. I I still have this weird just and I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I just can't shake this weird like feeling of like if the Chiefs go and win the Super Bowl and Andy Reid gets his revenge and he, he beats the, the Eagles in the Super Bowl and they fired him and all that and Andy Reid just riding to the sunset. Just can just just see them just trading for Sean Brun, just have that secession plan just already laid out. You just come in, get the coach 15, we get the 32 overall pick, bro. Just, I, I don't know. It's just, Let's jump. <laughs> and we got the jump zone, bro. <laughs> but it got to be on site, bro. Like that to me, like to me, if that happens, Saints deserve, like the league should just award us like two extra first round picks. Like just, 
I don't care if they're like number thirty three overall or whatever. Like, <laughs> like we should get awarded that, bro. Like that's fucked up. When to be? And I and I, I just after I saw the 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 Chiefs win tonight, I was like, man, because I there's always been like a, a suspicion that there might just be a like this quote unquote mystery team, meaning that a team would kind of unexpectedly fire their their head coach kind of late in the game if all the shit aligned and they would trade for Sean. And the only team that would make sense for me to see that could happen would be the Chiefs, bro. And I would just I I would I would be disgusted, but I will say this as a Saints fan. As as if anyone should be disgusted by this, it's it's me. <laughs> it's me. But the way I would look at it as a Saints fan is that at least you would get, even though it's a 30 second old, leave us, even though it's 32, and I know it's a the absolute last first pick in the first round. I would argue that it would be better getting one, he'd be going to a different conference, which I think is a good thing. Two, at least you're getting the first round pick this season, as opposed to him going back to Fox, and then then you just don't know what you might get next season. Like I, I think the Saints leverage in terms of what they could ask for declines and decreases after if he goes back to Fox and you have to do this again next season. That's just the way I would look at it, even though it would be absolutely fucking disgusting. Just gross, bro. Gross. Like he gets to work with Mahomes. <laughs> Chiefs. After not having the balls to go up and get them for us. Trade oh. up, bro. <laughs> You're giving me uh the the no vibes from, from get out right now from from the main. No, no, no. No, no. Okay. It would be bad, man. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm not no, I, I get it. Look, if they can get anything, bro, at this point, bro, I'm just like, please give it here. You gotta, you gotta do it, man. First round pick, bro. Because we need it, man. We need it. And I guess the only unfortunate thing is I don't know if you know, we don't know how true this is. But it don't seem like this draft is that great. Like, even on the top end, like, yeah, you got a couple quarterbacks and a couple DL, you know, D linemen and stuff like that. But it doesn't seem like the greatest draft. Um, Seems pretty shallow. A little shallow. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I haven't really dug deep and studied, so I could be talking on my ass. I'm just repeating what I've heard from, like, you know, the talking heads or whatever. But we'll see, man. Like, like even if we get like a first round pick next year, like I'll take that. Like if Arizona says, "Oh yeah, a a second this year and a first round pick next year," nice. Let's go. Okay. You know, I could deal with that because whatever the Saints at, it's not going to be fixed this year. Like, no, nothing they can do this year that's going to fix where they're at. Nothing. No. No. Um. Now I'm I'm trying to think if they could if they could make a move. Okay. It it probably wouldn't fix things. And it would for sure, and this again, this would be a very Saints move because it's a very short sighted move, especially with the amount of money you would have to at least pay him up front guaranteed. What 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 if you called up Minnesota and said, Hey, we we'll we'll give you we'll give you a third round pick. For for Kirk Cousins, a third. If it would probably take a second. To be fair, it would probably take yeah. the forty. The four. The tar- It would probably Please. take forty one. Yeah, oh, I'll do that in a heartbeat, bro. And look, you you'd have a man, but man, Kai get to work, Kai. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker gonna, gonna be stretched out. <laughs> you, you, you just gonna do your taxes. That's how you feel it. <laughs> just nest. Kirk gonna be like one million on the cap this year, bro. <laughs> So it would be stretched out, bro. But I take but I, it, man. Man, I could. I, I people are going to listen to this and just be disgusted hearing it. I know it, bro, because I know I know what the the public perception of Kirk Cousins as a player is. But Kirk Cousins had like his best, one of his best seasons this this year. Look, Played man, a really statist- high level of football statistically. 
he gives you your average Drew Brees uh, season. Like just, yes. you know, 4,300 yards, you know, 30 touchdowns. You know what I'm saying? Like he's going to give you that, you know. He ain't going to go much over that, but he's going to give you that. You know, he's going to have some goof goofball games in there. Um, but, man, like, I'd take Kirk Cousins in a heartbeat, bro. Now, the money, he's a shrewd motherfucker. So, ooh, he, he go with that money, bro. He's going to tax that ass now. He ain't, he, <laughs> he ain't taking no discount now. You know, but, man, like I said, man, can I get to work, baby? Do your thing. <laughs> Do your thing. Um, <clears throat> anything else, you know, from this playoffs or just with Sean that's just kind of like on your on your radar, just anything about the Saints overall? Um, it still on, just on blows radar. me that everything Sean is looking for, yeah. Mm. It's right there. Gail offered him more money. Gail said you can take a year off. You got full control of the of the roster, full control of the organization, everything you want right here. And just the fact that he didn't want it like that, that will forever have me saying, fuck Sean P forever. forever so, and I get it I, on a human level, like, cause sometimes you just need, you know, sometimes it's kind of like, hey, you know, I want to see something different, but it's like, ah, man, fuck you. I think a underreported thing, when you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Save big on your Memorial Day barbecue, all in the Kroger app. Get pints of juicy Georgia-grown blueberries for $1.99 each with a digital coupon. Then get select varieties of flavorful Powerade, Body Armor Super Drink, or Arizona tea for 77 cents each, all with your card. Shop these deals at your local Kroger, less than five miles away. Or tap the screen now to download the Kroger app to save big today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Prices and product availability subject to change. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Of that, of his decision, is how maybe his relationship with Mickey had deteriorated. Mm. I, I, it's this is this is not something that is is reported at all. <laughs> if, I, if I could be honest, I mean, but we saw it happen because it's not like he mm-hmm. just decided to leave. Like he had been flirting with other teams for years now. He is. And he even had like a weird press conference after, was it the Colts where he decided not to, when they decided not to trade for him or somebody? Or the yes. Rams. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. And he had like a weird press conference. Ever, like, we're talking, pretty, pretty much saying, look, oh, everything okay now. Like me and Mickey, we good now. Like it was one of those type of vibes. It was just weird because he never had like an after season presser like that where he was just basically resetting the. I think it was 2016 where he was just kind of like resetting and being like, we good now. We good. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, I think, you know, like you're right, that is underreported. And like, we'll never know the inside details because, like you said, they, you know, they were close. You know what I'm saying? So, who knows what the disagreement could have been um, or whether, you know, the riff, you know, or sometimes it's just like, man, you get tired of working with some people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, sometimes it's your friend. And you'd rather keep them as a friend than a business partner. All kind of different things. Um, that was so what, that's, never that's, a, that's, that's fifteen. That's a fifteen year friendship, bro. Like that's a long time. That's a long time in the building together, bro. Like you work, I worked places for two, three, four years and developed like great friendships with people. You know, and nowhere near the intimate nature as football, where you. Blood, sweat, and tears, crying, laughing, drinking, you know, everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's a whole different type of deal right there. It is. It's it's night and day, and it's just it's just one of those things where it's, you know, you ever I mean not not now, but like 
ever been with someone in the past and you just they just say you know what I just just, just need a break I just need a break. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why I think a lot of Sean's decision was him saying he needed a break. Not yes, the Saints, but probably more importantly for Mickey because mm-hmm. they may have been close to tear, tearing each other apart had Sean not taken um, that break. Mm-hmm. Although to be to be to be fair, we, going back to the, going back to point A, what we we started this podcast with now. You had the balls to trade up and draft someone in 2017. Kind of have a uh, like a spry in your step, bro. Like you're like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, this relationship might be shit, but <laughs> that that, that point right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's just, it's just interesting. I'm with you though. I want. I want it to just whatever the decision is. I want it to be done. Like everyone's texting me and like blah 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 blah, blah. and I'm just like I've been kind of tuned out of it. Part of that is just because work has been absolutely fucking crazy as shit. Like I just haven't had really a lot of time um to focus on it. But like I'm also kind of taking a mindset of just like when when it happens, it happens. If he gets traded, he gets traded. If he goes back to Fox, he goes back to Fox. But I do get from a like from fans' perspective, they just want. Some type of closure in regards to like how how to move forward, right? The, at least Clarity, this you know part, of the, yeah. It's kind of like a divorce, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, you separate with your wife, whatever, and, but you didn't get divorced yet, and you know, both they all kind of in that gray area. Like, oh, let's get this shit documented. We done. We moving on. Done. Whatever it is, we split the money. You take more of my money. I take whatever. Done. Paper sign. Let's move on about our business. And that's where it's kind of at. Like, like, let's be done with the Sean Payton business. Move on, you know. And other than that, man, just watching the playoffs today, bro. Just like, you know, just you know, being a priest of like, man, good quarterback play, bro. It's so hard to find, bro. Like, really, like star quarterbacks, man. I mean, just look at it, bro. I mean, Joe Burrow, he went what number one overall. Patrick Mahomes went what tenth, tenth overall. Um, um, Jalen Hurts went like the second round, top of the second round. Um, and then you got the Forty Nineers who just like plug it and play quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? Like, what a can we just really quickly talk about like what a they have had some insane injury fate. To the quarterback position, bruh. I just when I saw when he when Birdie walked off and he was talking with the trainers about his I'm just like, man, sports is cruel, bro. Like sports is just so cool. Like like I hate 49ers. I hate fans and all of them, you know, except your your girl. And it's like, damn, like that's just messed up. Like you in it, like it wasn't even like three snaps into the game where he got sacked, they hit his fucking elbow. And it's like, damn, like that story, that whole story, people been talking about it all week, Purdy, this and that, Mr. Relevant, and just so that quick, it's over. It's over, over man. It's like, um, it also really, really just brings it into mind of how fucking hard it is to win a championship. The fact that oh, bro. this is the Chiefs third Super Bowl in four years is Bruh. insane. Insane. <laughs> insane. Um, but like, to your point, it, it is it is hard, hard, hard to find uh, good quarterback play. Uh, Cowboys did something interesting today. You know, him and our Cowboys and Kellen Moore mutually agreed to part ways. Um, yeah. Big Fangio seems like he's going to the Dolphins, which maybe kind of gives you a hint that maybe Sean Payton might not get a job. Um, yeah. You know, this this coaching cycle. And it would be, it would, like, it would be so nice if, if you think you just call up, like, oh, Kellen Moore? Kellen Moore? Like, I know he has his warts as an offensive coordinator, but, like, Kellen Moore? I'm just putting a call right now. Man, Kellen Moore would hang up that phone so fast, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Kelly, this is uh, this is Dennis out. Click, <laughs> <Ooh>. fuck out, <laughs> click, 
click. No. <laughs> no. Um I I think as a Saints fan, what what's a little disheartening is and someone tweeted it, and I think it was the most appropriate fucking tweet was that the Saints tra- tried so hard to preach continuity, stability, mm. culture that Sean Payton has built, blah, 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 blah. And they, they, they tried to, like, follow it, like, to a T, just, like, exactly to a fucking T, to the point that, that by doing that, they have ruined everything that Sean Payton and and I guess Mickey Loomis because his ego is also big, but largely Sean Payton built over 15 years. Man. That's some shit right there, boy. Like someone, I, I wish I could have it at the top of my mind or who tweeted it at me or who maybe put it in our discord. I don't, I don't know, but I read that and I was like, that's just so perfectly said, man. Like it's just, it's on the money. It's, it's on the money. At no point after Sean left, did they think to just go outside whatever Sean had built? Meaning, mm-hmm. like, yeah, DA was a was a good defensive coordinator, but like, did they look like? Did they really see like the warning signs? of him being a failure as, as an Oakland head coach? No. Like, it, they just... And that's where it just goes to kind of they have the blind, the blinders of just... They have to be a team that has an open mind and has a plan and not so stuck in, in their ways of, of what they want. And, like, it's, it's fine to have, I guess, a preference... But when that preference becomes a bias, then you have issues. And I think a lot of the issues that the Saints have had post uh, Sean Payton has been that that bias. Like, yeah. why 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 would you even going back to last season? Why would you make Pete Carmichael offensive coordinator when this man didn't want the job? <laughs> like, why? It make, that makes no sense. And now you 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 have him again. When he didn't want the job last off season, like what's changed? And he ha- he didn't have a great stint as offensive coordinator. And like, what did he show you this year? Where it's like, man, we gotta get Pete back. <laughs> this is this is. I-, I want this off season to at least give us. I'm not going to say hope because I think hope is a strong word, but at least just some like, okay, like we're not a complete fucking dumpster fire. Because I'll be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, Ryan, like right now the Saints feel like a fucking dumpster fire. <laughs> it feels like it, but I'm telling you, they won't be a complete dumpster fire. They'll be no, they can't. Annoying, no, no, an annoying as below average team, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just annoying. They'll win. And- Four, at least four or five games. Right. Four or five games, being a couple games, like, oh, if they would have made that field goal, they would have won. Uh, it's just annoying, bro. Annoying. It's like, ugh. And, you know, watching the day just made me more annoyed, bro. Just like, man, these teams just deep. Deep line, <laughs> linebacker, cornerback, offensive line, running back, wide receiver, quarterback. Good coaching, you know what I'm saying? Just Justin on the fly, just in the second half, just in the second it. quarter. Nuts, showing guts to go for it when people say you shouldn't and all that. Like, man. We far away, man. We, <laughs> we far away, bro. <laughs> like, we talked about it during the like season I just, we I, did. Yeah. Just, just going up in different weight classes, bro. Like we, we, we four or five weight classes below where the cream of the crop of the NFL is right now. I just want to know what Loomis think. Like, what, like I'm sure Loomis did watching the football today. And when you see Chauncey going to Jackson hugging his coach, 
in tears. And when you see, you know, Zach, Zach Taylor dropping his nuts on fourth down when your head coach was the bottom of the league and going forward on fourth down, like, what are you thinking? Like, are you thinking, like, man, we close? Or are you thinking, whew, we got a way to go? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you thinking, Mickey? That's what I want to know. I I think Mickey, some of this I think, but some of this I also no. Mickey is so set on on proving to the league and to, like, the public that he can – be successful in running a franchise and, and building a team without Sean that it's like, he's, he's, he's stubborn about it. Like even to the point where it's like, man, if we, if we fire DA after one season, shit, that kind of, kind of means that like the kind of means that the reason we were good last season was because of Sean. Like mm-hmm. yes, yeah. <laughs> like, that, like, like that's okay. <laughs> and it also looks bad on me. Is a... mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, so I, but knowing this team, bro, I I, I can see them like man, yeah, them, them Eagles won won the NFC Championship game, but we 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 fucked them up a couple weeks ago. Like <laughs> yeah, they didn't have a starting quarterback, but their defense put yeah, thirteen but, points don't... on the defense. <laughs> That's what they're thinking about right now, right? Like they feel like they're they're just how they miss self scouted their team last season, man. I could just see them miss self scouted. Like they probably feel like with the with the right quarterback, whoever this whoever the quarterback is, they feel like they right back in the game, bro. Like they yeah. win. <laughs> I truly believe that. Which is which is terrifying. I truly believe. Like, it. It's it's t- like if they, they can say we just get a better quarterback play. We get a Derek Carr in here. We we go out. There. We we could be where the Eagles are right now. <laughs> what? Oh my god! <laughs> I truly, and I say that with some, with some jest, but like mostly truth. <laughs> That's mostly truth. Um, and I just to to the whole point we were talking about just at the beginning as as we're wrapping up. There's so many aging players and holes on the defense where I feel like there's going to be a huge regression, not like a, a probably a substantial regression on the defensive side of the ball. That I don't think a lot of fans are accounting for. Um, and then a bigger, a bigger question is like the offensive line and like, it's going to be hurt as shit, bro. <laughs> like yeah. the offensive line is going to be hurt is hell to start the season. And so I, I don't know, man. You got Trevor. You got Trevor Penning, who has a Liz Frank. Cesar Ruiz got a Liz Frank. Ramchek got bad, bad hips, bad knees. Pete, 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 Pete probably like probably won't be on the team. Like he's a. At, at, I feel like they're finally at the point of sunken fallacy cost where they're going to finally cut ties with Pete. But potentially, potentially, we'll see. But I, I don't know, man. I just can. I just want them to do one thing when the off season starts. Where we could be like, we could just clap for them. Just a little, let's a little clap, bro. That's all. Little clap, little bro. clap. please. <laughs> not, 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 not asking for a huge free agency signing. I'm not asking for a huge trade. Just, just get show. Even if they did something like extended Jawan Johnson and Caden Ellis, bro, I'd be oh. like, you know what? Slow <laughs> <laughs> golf clap, bro. Okay. <laughs> you you guys are not complete fucking idiots. <laughs> but as soon I, I know how the story gonna go, bro. As soon as the the tenders do go come out, Jawan Johnson got the lowest the lowest tender available. We, <laughs> we you gonna see, bro. You gonna see. Mm. You know, and then you know probably Jawan Johnson go to the Eagles and being two oh, tight end sets with, with Dallas Goddard, bro. <laughs> bro. Um, but I, I, I know that as the off season moves on and as we get, a, we get further away from, from Saints things, I do, it just happens every, every year our listenership goes down. So for those who continue to listen, thank you. Um, we truly like this, this is, these are the listeners that matter the most, honestly, is 
it's easy to get listens during the season. Well, it's kind of hard. <laughs> Last season was kind of a struggle because things were shit. Yeah, but got it tough. Yeah. Got it tough. But like, <laughs> usually it's easy to get listens during the season. But listens during the off season, you know, for whatever reason, I and I get it. People kind of would just tune out football uh, during the off season. That's understandable. But thank y'all for supporting us. Um, even when the Saints are not, like, not in the playoffs, they're not contending. Uh, these are the listens and, and views on YouTube and all that that really, really helps us out tremendously, uh, more than y'all will, will ever know. So just want to give y'all a big, a big thanks and, and shout out for that. We really appreciate y'all. No question. Uh, so we will probably record something. Hope, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens this week. If there's anything news rather that we need to, I feel like uh, something coming, bro. We're gonna we're gonna hear something feel, this week. Yeah, we might have to do it. I, I just feel like probably an emergency podcast is gonna gonna happen at some point this week for whatever reason. For whatever reason. Um, also, I a hundred percent know during the Super Bowl pressers leading up to the Super Bowl, CD Deuce is gonna say something that causes the Saints Twitter to be oh, a hundred percent. It's gonna <laughs> happen without question, bro. <laughs> Kent, Kent, Terrell probably gonna be out there asking the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chauncey, can you uh, give your your side of stories of where what the, where things went wrong and with the Saints? <laughs> she don't see messy, bro. She messy. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait, bro. Anyway, thank y'all for for listening and supporting us. We really appreciate. It. We know we hadn't done one. Well, we did, we did we did a Patreon only one, so we did do one last week, but we did want to put out another one, kind of. For, for everyone to enjoy and listen to. Um, so thank y'all. Also, for I do think if you haven't listened to that Patreon-only episode, has a lot of juicy details, has a lot of juicy information um, in regards to what went on with the offensive coordinator search. And also, whoever is in the Saints who's listening to this podcast, please, please let us know who you are. Please. 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 Driving, us, driving us crazy. Please. Um, but with that, we're going to get out of here. We will be back soon. We're out. Peace. mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Save big on your Memorial Day barbecue, all in the Kroger app. Get pints of juicy Georgia-grown blueberries for $1.99 each with a digital coupon. Then get select varieties of flavorful Powerade, Body Armor Super Drink, or Arizona tea for 77 cents each, all with your card. Shop these deals at your local Kroger, less than five miles away. Or tap the screen now to download the Kroger app to save big today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Prices and product availability subject to change. Restrictions apply. See site for details.